Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a really requested video and that is how I started my YouTube channel and what tips that I would give to anyone who wants to start one themselves. So hopefully you guys can learn something from this video. If you do and you like content like this or if you like other stuff like fashion, beauty, lifestyle, travel, home decor, then definitely be sure to subscribe and of course give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. So I guess I will start off with my own journey, how I got started, what my experience was, and everything like that. So I posted my very first YouTube video on August 30th of 2018, right after I graduated college in May. I watched YouTube in the days when it was not very cool to watch YouTube or to do YouTube. I loved it. I watched Bethany Moda, Mac Barbie 07. I watched All That Glitters 21, Juicy Star 07. You guys know if you are the OG YouTube lover like me, you know who those people are. And I would actually even film videos on my laptop webcam and not post them, of course, but just do it for fun because I loved to do it. But to be quite honest, at that age, I was embarrassed to even be interested in that sort of thing. And I know a lot of people back in that day and age like hid their YouTube channels and stuff which is so silly looking back on it that people would make fun of someone for doing that but that's how it was and so I didn't start one then and then even in high school and college like I always thought about it but I just knew I didn't really have the time to commit I wasn't at a place in my life where I was disciplined enough to actually be consistent with a YouTube channel and I knew that about myself and I knew if I wanted to ever start one, I wanted it to be serious and something that I really like can put a lot of time in. So I knew after I graduated college, that was my time. If I was ever gonna do it, it was going to be now. Luckily, I have people in my life who are the most encouraging people ever. My mom is always, always an advocate for like, do it. If you wanna just do something, do it. You're never going to reach your dreams unless you try. So honestly, without her, I probably would have never started. And my husband, Patrick, he was amazing as well. Always in my corner, always telling me, you should try it, you should just do it. So that's kind of what I did. I just listened to them. I bought a camera and everything like that, and I just got started. It was scary, but so exciting, and something that I've always wanted to do, and I never would have known unless I posted that first video. And honestly, after that, it was just something that I enjoyed so much. Like, I kind of joke about it sometimes that I, that I like blacked out for like the next few months because I honestly don't remember keeping track of things that much. People always ask like how did you gain subscribers what did you do like to gain so many subscribers so fast and honestly I don't really know like I kind of forget I think it was just about actually being passionate about it and enjoying it I did it for fun I post would come home from work you know I always had a job after college I would come home film edit like I lived with my parents still at that point so I had a lot of time to myself that I could just kind of work on YouTube. So that's what I did. I didn't share my YouTube channel at all until I probably had maybe 10,000 subscribers and that is totally just a personal preference. I didn't really want to share it with everyone until I knew it was going to like be successful. But of course sharing your videos, you should if you want people to view them, you know what I'm saying? So I think most people know that in order to be monetized on YouTube, if you don't know what monetization means, it means you can put ads on your videos and start making money from your videos. In order to be monetized, you have to have 1,000 subscribers. So that is like kind of like the goal for everyone at first, I think. Um, not that people just care about making money because trust me, you don't make much at that point. But I don't know, it's just like a, a stepping stone in the YouTube community. I think the first 1,000 subscribers just come from your personality, of course. Do people enjoy watching you? Are you well-spoken? Are your videos concise? I mean, you don't want to upload just an hour-long video of you sitting there talking. You want to be sure to actually edit it. Are you putting in the work? Basically, that's what people want to see. Are you putting in the work to actually be consistent with this. People want to know, am I going to subscribe and do I trust this person to continue making videos? Because people don't want to just subscribe and then a week later you're not doing it anymore. So being consistent is how you get your first 1,000 subscribers. And if you're being consistent and you're still not gaining followers and you're like, what the heck else do I need to do? 
check and make sure your stuff is professional. Does it look good? Are your thumbnails good? Do your research and we will get into all of that later. So I'm kind of getting sidetracked here, but that is my journey. I started over a year ago now, I now have about 24,000 subscribers. I'm definitely still a very small YouTuber, but I feel like that's sometimes fun to learn from other small YouTubers how they got started and they haven't even been on YouTube very long. So that's why I wanted to bring this video to you guys. All right, so now let's get into the nitty gritty. What do you guys need to do to start a YouTube channel? Enough about me and what I did. What do you need to do right now to be able to start your own channel? So let's talk about equipment of course you are going to need a camera. I mean, that is the number one thing or a nice phone. If you have the iPhone 11 Max Pro, whatever, I've heard that that's really great at doing videos. I mean, I have that phone. I have never personally done a full YouTube video on it, but I've heard it's pretty good. Personally, I like filming on a camera better, but if you don't have the budget for that and you already have an iPhone, you can always start there. I mean, it doesn't matter if your system is absolutely perfect to get started. So the cameras that I have and would recommend. First of all, I started with the Canon G7X. It is a vlogging camera. That's kind of what people use it for mostly, but I love it and it can film your regular sit down videos just like this perfectly fine. And that is what I used up until 2020. So up until the beginning of this year, I always used the Canon G7X and I loved it. But basically it has a flip out screen, which is super important so that you can see yourself in the like screen. So this camera I'm filming on right now also has a flip out screen, but that's really important to have so that you can see if your video is in focus. That way you can film by yourself. You definitely don't want to always have someone there filming you. I mean, if you have that, then great, but I don't have someone just willing to film me every day, you know, but having the flip out screen is really important. After about a year and a half on YouTube, I decided it was time to upgrade to a DSLR camera. I was super excited about it. So I bought the Canon EOS 6D Mark II camera and I absolutely love it. I think it's great. It's has like Wi-Fi capabilities and everything. Of course, you can switch out the lenses, which is very nice because of course on the Canon G7X, you can't switch out the lenses. But this one, you can switch out the lenses and that can kind of give you a more professional look. So the lens that I'm using right now is the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter and I love it. It kind of gives that very, it's a zoom lens, so it gives the zoomed in effect with the blurry background behind me. I also have the Canon EF 75 to 300 millimeter as well. And I really like that one too, just for some more basic shots. You can get a lot closer with that one and still get the full frame, whereas this one, it's more of a zoom lens, so you are going to have to be very far away to capture a full picture, if that makes sense. I've also heard great things about the Sony A5100. This one, I believe, is sort of like a vlogging camera. It's really similar to the Canon G7X, but you can switch out the lenses. So I know a lot of people have been switching over to that camera. So if you want just like a vlogging style, like a smaller camera, but you want to be able to switch out the lenses, maybe check that one out. Check out the reviews. Like I said, I don't own it myself, but I've heard really great things. Of course, you will need a tripod if you want to just sit in a seat like I am and have your camera right in front of you. You could always use like a stack of books or something like that, but that to me was just super frustrating. I would rather just buy a $30 tripod on Amazon and call it a day. I will link everything that I'm talking about down in the description box below. And then lastly, you will need something for lighting. If you have great natural lighting in your apartment or home, whatever, and you don't mind waiting only at the perfect time in the daylight to film, then you're good. But if you want an option to have a little bit better lighting and also to be able to film at night if you need to or whatever the case may be, if it's cloudy out, I would recommend getting a ring light. I have one that's pretty basic. Very simple, easy to put together. I've had it since I started my channel. That is still the only lighting that I use. It's very bright and very consistent, which is nice. I would eventually like to upgrade to soft boxes. My goal for 2020 is to upgrade my equipment, which I've already started doing, but the next step would be to upgrade my lighting. I would eventually like to get soft boxes, so th that would be like two lights right here, and it just makes a softer light, not as harsh and everything like that. When I started my channel, the like fourth things that I bought were my camera, memory card, tripod, and a ring light. 
that is it. Another piece of equipment you may or may not want is a microphone. If you choose to go all in from the get-go and get a DSLR camera, I definitely recommend having a microphone. It changed my life. I mean, I only used it, I only used my DSLR camera once without the microphone and that was for my what I got for Christmas video and you can hear auto focusing. So I immediately went on Amazon and got my shotgun mic that I'm using right now and it is great. I think the audio sounds awesome with it. It's super easy to use. It takes batteries. It just makes your audio sound super crisp and your camera is going to focus on everything but you won't be able to hear it auto focusing which is great. A lot of people also get little, um, I forget what they're called, but the mics that just you, that sit there if you're doing a lot of voiceovers, if you're like a DIYer or just something where you're gonna do a lot of like voiceovers, I would recommend that type of mic so you can sit it on your desk and when you speak into it, it's going to be a lot more clear than just recording on your laptop. When I had the Canon G7X, I did not use a microphone at all. Any voiceovers I did, I recorded on my laptop. I do have a pretty nice MacBook where the audio is really good, so that definitely helped. I didn't feel like my audio sounded super bad when I did voiceover, so I just left it. I didn't bother with getting a mic when I used that camera, but like I said, once I did upgrade, I did want to go ahead and get a shotgun mic for my DSLR camera setup, and I really, really enjoy it. I think it is great. I'm super happy with my setup right now. So ignore the messy background. This room is a disaster that I need to clean today, but um, here is my setup. So I just have the ring light here that I was talking about. Like I said, it's just a circle like this and it has a cover to make it a little softer and you can kind of adjust the height with these knobs and everything like that and then here is my camera setup i'll turn the ring light off this camera is really really nice of course you don't need all of this to start but um this is just what i have going on right now and then this is the shotgun mic that i was talking about super easy to use and it just makes things sound so much better. And then this is the tripod that I was talking about. Just sits right here. And then I sit in this chair right here with this as my background. So pretty simple. Just a chair in front of this dresser. And then, see my dog right there. And then my camera set up just right in front, right here. So... And of course, I am also in front of a window too, which helps. So once you have your camera set up, you are good to go to just sit down and start filming. Of course, you want to have a list of ideas ready to go. What do you want to film? Like, that's going to be your biggest task to get started is what you want to film have five to ten videos lined up that you know you want to film and that you think your audience or your future audience would be interested in and then once you're done filming you're going to want to edit your video editing is super easy these days I think there are a lot of free softwares that you can use. Specifically, if you have a MacBook, you can use iMovie, and then I think the Windows version is Movie Maker, maybe? Something like that. But you could use either of those options to get you started to just make cuts of like when you're not talking, if you're looking at your notes, whatever, you can just cut out those little pieces, not do anything crazy. If that's what you wanna do, use the free versions. There's no reason to pay money for an editing software if you don't need it. So for me, I have always used Adobe Premiere Pro on my videos. Because I was a fashion major in college, I already had a subscription to Adobe. So in that subscription, I pay a yearly rate and I get Adobe Photoshop, Premiere, and everything like that. I already had that subscription from college, so I just renewed it. Um, once I needed to because I really enjoy Photoshop and Premiere Pro. So that is what I still use to this day. That, from a lot of like experts, is the best editing software in their opinion. I am not a pro at editing at all. I would love to get better at editing, but um, I don't have a lot of like skills in Adobe Premiere Pro, but it's still pretty user friendly and anything that I need to know, I can just Google and usually figure it out. So that is what I use. I do all of my cuts for my videos in that software as well as add in any photos, sound effects, music, um, you know, the subscribe little button, the end screen and intro, any of that stuff you can do in Adobe Premiere Pro. Another option that you can pay for is Final Cut Pro. A lot of YouTubers use Final Cut Pro. I would say it's definitely the most used probably 
but I, like I said, already had Adobe, so I just went with Adobe Premiere Pro. I recommend doing research to see which would be best for you. There are so many people here on YouTube that do reviews on software, cameras, equipment, and that has been so helpful in starting a YouTube channel. Like, their knowledge is so overwhelming in a good way. I mean, you anything that you need to know about YouTube equipment or software, it's out there on YouTube already, which is super convenient. Also, you can add an intro and an outro. I don't have an intro yet. I don't think they're necessary and I don't think you should kill yourself trying to have one when you first get started. I think they are really cool. I would like to have one this year eventually. I would like to have just like a short little intro. You could always learn to do one yourself, but you could also go on websites like Fiverr and a lot of people you can pay to create an intro or outro for you, which is really cool. If you're willing to spend the money on like a cool, unique, customized intro or outro, that's awesome. That's a great option. As for an outro, I created my outro in Photoshop. It's really just an end screen. So basically an end screen is just something at the end of your video where you can add a subscribe icon to videos for people to potentially click on. And I add like XOXO Kayla Nicole and then a subscribe icon and my Instagram handle as well. So that's what's on my end screen. I just created it in Photoshop. Actually, I didn't even create it in Photoshop. I created it in Adobe Premiere. I just drug in an Instagram icon, a Photoshop icon, my name, typed it up, a background and everything like that. And then on YouTube, once your video processes, you can add an end screen template with the subscribe button and the two videos. So you can do all of that there. Once you're done editing, you can export your video to a file and then create a thumbnail. So thumbnails to me are one of the most important things on a video. I think a thumbnail is what gets people's attention, especially visual people, which I'm a visual person. So I click on thumbnails that look interesting. I create all of my thumbnails in Adobe Photoshop, which I love. Oh my god, I love Adobe Photoshop. It is the best for thumbnails and stuff like that. I would love to do some Adobe Photoshop tutorials. I have used Photoshop for like graphic design stuff for years now. It was a huge part of my major in college and I love it. I have so much fun. Honestly, creating thumbnails is one of my favorite parts. I I'm really experienced with Adobe Photoshop. Like I said, I'm really not with editing in Adobe Premiere Pro, but I do know quite a bit about Photoshop, so that is something that I definitely could film more videos on. I will show you guys a little bit in this video of how I do that. Basically, you just want to have a clip from your video, so at the end of filming, you want to like do a little pose, so you know, if you have something you're talking about, a product, you could just hold it up just like that, and then when you have it on your computer, I just take a full screenshot of it, then I import that photo into Photoshop and do, and just play around with it, get creative. I do a lot of strokes either around my body, around the products, I add in products, add in cute little PNG images, add text of course. I download my fonts at, I think it's like 1000 free fonts or something, I'll link it down below. That is where I download all of my fonts and then I like really hit up the stroking. I think that's what makes your text font like stand out is when you have like, I don't know, it just looks like a pop text instead of just a flat, plain black, no stroke outline. I usually add a drop drop shadow so it kind of looks like it's sitting on top of the photo, not like in the photo itself, if that makes sense. So yeah, hopefully when I'm like actually showing you guys these things, it'll make a lot more sense, but thumbnails are really important. If you don't want to pay for Photoshop, you can also get started on websites like Canva or pick monkey and things like that. I will do a little research for you guys because like I said, to me, I love adding a stroke to my text. If you don't know what that means, it just is like an outline. So if I have a pink text, I'll have a black out, small outline around the pink and you just can't do all of that stuff on Canva. I mean, if you already have a YouTube channel and you really wanna take it to the next level, I would really recommend getting an Adobe membership. I mean, to me, I love using that stuff and I think that is a game changer 
in your videos. You can really create and learn so much by using those programs and softwares. If you guys would be interested in seeing a full video all about how I create thumbnails, then let me know. Give this video a thumbs up so I know and I would really love to film that for you guys. Next up is a title. I wouldn't get too crazy with your titles. I'm not someone who likes to do clickbait. If your channel is like a vlog channel and you like the clickbait sort of thing, to each their own, but for my style of channel, that's just not what I do. I just do a title that I think is good for what my video is about, you know? So for this video, of course, it's gonna be something like how to start a successful YouTube channel in 2020. I will say appeal to the audience's needs. People want to watch your videos to get something from them. Are you going to give them A, entertainment, B, knowledge, are they gonna learn something from your video? Just think of your audience at all times and I think that you will be successful. I will link a couple of YouTube like channels that I watch to do research on before I started my channel. Sunny Lanzara, I don't know her last name, Sunny. I always watch her YouTube stuff. She does great videos on the actual data and anal analytics behind YouTube videos and how to be successful. She's amazing. So I will link her channel in a couple other ones that I use for equipment reviews and things like that down below. So definitely check out the description box and all of that information will be down there. So next, let's talk about your content itself. So like I said earlier, you're going to want to have a lot of ideas lined up. You don't want to get stagnant so early on. You want to have a ton of ideas. That is my most favorite part, of course, is creating video ideas. I, at all times, have like 100 videos that I want to do that there's just not even enough time for me to do all of them, you know? As far as what to make your channel about, if you are watching this video, I would assume that you probably already have an idea of what you would talk about if you had your own YouTube channel. Of course, for me, I am super interested in fashion and beauty, makeup, um, I travel a lot and I love sharing that with you guys and um, home decor, anything like that. So I have a lot of different interests. So my channel is just kind of like a lifestyle slash fashion channel, I would say, which is a very large range of people. A lot of people could be interested in different things on my channel. And this is kind of a insult to myself here, but if you wanna be super, super successful, definitely having a strong niche to your channel is really great because people know what they're gonna get from your channel. If you are all about sewing, for instance, if you sew clothes and that's your channel, people know what they're gonna get when they come to your channel. They're only going to get tutorials and tips and tricks on sewing. But of course, if you're like me and some of your videos are on home decor, some are on travel, some are on makeup, some are on fashion, someone who's into home decor might not be into makeup. And I know that and that's okay with me. Um, so just know that if you have like a wide range, your channel might not take off as fast and it might take you a little longer to develop a true relationship with all of your subscribers because they might be there for different reasons. But there's nothing wrong with any type of channel. At the end of the day, it's your channel and you can upload what you want. And that's the beauty of it. I have a lot of different interests and I've been like this my whole life. I think it's awesome for me to have my own space where I can post whatever I want and hopefully, you know, some people will enjoy it and if others don't, then they don't have to watch it. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's yours and yours only. So do what you want and just do what makes you happy and what you're passionate about and others will fall in line because they love to watch people doing what they're passionate about and talking about what they know about. As I said earlier, consistency is key. I could say this a million times. Be consistent. I wouldn't start off being like, I'm going to post three videos a week. That's a lot. I would start off doing one video a week, see how that goes. If that goes great, add in another one. If you're gonna commit to one video a week, never miss that one video a week, because trust me, when you're first getting started, people notice those things. I would plan your content in advance. So I, every month, sit down and plan out my videos for the month. Does that change sometimes? Of course, and that is okay. But just to have like a kind of set temporary plan is always helpful. Another thing that I did before I started was to look on channels that were similar to what mine was going to be. So similar fashion channels, lifestyle, cha lifestyle channels, and I would literally go through their videos and actually I would sometimes go all the way back to when they first started 
and I would literally look at what videos got the most views for them. And I'm not saying you should steal other people's ideas because YouTube is such a crazy space. Like who invented a shopping haul? Nobody. Like who knows, you know? Who invented a skincare routine that you do on your channel? Like, it's not like anyone owns these ideas. That was just the research part of what I did. I'm not saying, oh, if they did a, I don't know, a car tour and you don't like your car and you don't want to do a car tour, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? But if there is something that you are interested in that got someone similar to you, a lot of views, then maybe consider adding that to the list of video ideas that you have that you want to film. How my Amazon videos got started, I never even expected my Amazon videos to blow up like they did, but I just saw other people be like doing a bunch of Amazon videos and I'm like, that would be so cool. I love Amazon. Like I get everything from Amazon. And then I um, decided to do designer dupes from Amazon and everyone loved that. And that is another thing that leads me to my next point. Once you find something that works for you, do it again. Create videos around something that worked for you. So for instance, if you did a morning routine and it got a lot of views, do a nighttime routine. Do a Sunday routine. Do, like, try to work that in as many ways as you can to grow your channel and to get another video that gets just as many views as that one. Hopefully that makes sense. Just find what works for you and continue to do those videos. I'm not saying that's all you have to do, but continue to sprinkle them in to your content somewhere because obviously people like that from you. Another thing that goes along with research is researching your own channel. Basically what I just said, you wanna look at your analytics of your channel, see what videos did well, um, see what videos didn't do so well, and that can really help you in planning your content for the future months. And then as far as growing your channel and gaining subscribers, I would say, again, consistency is really what it takes and getting better, improving. Listen to your subscribers. This is the internet. People are going to be harsh with you. They're going to tell you what they do and what they don't like. And as harsh as it can be sometimes, if people tell you something, try to take what they're saying into consideration. You know, when I first started, everyone was like, you talk way too much, and I still talk way too much, but I try to be a little more concise in my videos and think about only what information is going to help my viewers or give them something, entertainment, knowledge. Keep that in mind always. Try to take everything with a grain of salt and take it as constructive criticism. Listen to your audience. Listen to what they want to see and what they like about your channel and what they don't. What doesn't work, I guess I should say what doesn't work in the long-term aspect is commenting over and over and over on other people's channels being like, hey, come check out my channel. That is just not an efficient or effective way to gain subscribers authentically. If you want to post about it every single day on your Facebook, on your Instagram, do it. Those are your social media outlets and you have more than a right to do so. But I wouldn't go to someone else's page and ask their subscribers to follow you. That's just my personal opinion and I haven't seen that really work effectively. Another thing is just always improving your channel little by little. So if you started with an iPhone, for you improving your channel means eventually after six months, a thousand subscribers a year whatever milestone you want to make and then you're like I'm gonna get a camera after that do it people notice when you are trying to improve and grow your channel and they like that this doesn't have to be buying a new camera though necessarily it could be creating a banner for your YouTube channel if you didn't have a banner before and now you're like well I have 600 subscribers I think I should create a banner get on canva if you want a free option or if you have Photoshop do it on there Google how to create a YouTube banner. Do that. Just always be improving your channel somehow and people will take notice of that and notice that you are serious about this. Your subscriber count and the growth of your channel will reflect the hard work that you put into it. All right guys, and the last thing that I'm going to talk about in this video is making money. How do you make money from YouTube? Everyone wants to know this. It is a hot topic, I understand. But the first thing that I will say is do not make a YouTube channel just wanting to make money because that is the most stressful thing that you could ever do. And if you want YouTube to be a long-term thing for you, you don't want to start out in a stressful environment over it. If you start it just because you know it makes money, 
you're just going to be constantly like, okay, why am I not making money? I only made this much. Oh my God. That's not healthy and it's not good. It's not going to put yourself in a happy place and you want to and have to be in a happy place for people to enjoy watching you. So with that being said, of course, the money does come along with it if you are successful. So after a thousand subscribers, you can start making money from your videos. Basically how that works is you set up an AdSense account and YouTube makes it very easy. You get paid based on the amount of ads that people watch in your videos or click on. Basically you have to reach a threshold of $100 and if you reach that every month, then you will be paid every month. Even for me right now at 24,000 subscribers, it's definitely not enough that I get paid from YouTube alone to be a sustainable income for like a full-time job. But how I make money aside from just my AdSense on YouTube, I personally use a lot of affiliate marketing. So I am a member of two affiliate marketing companies, I guess. I don't know how you would say that. The first one is Shop Style Collective and the second one is Reward Style. These are really popular in the blogger world. You have to apply to them, put your platform on there, how many followers or whatever you have, and hopefully you will get approved. Basically, a lot of big brands that we shop at all the time, Nordstrom, Amazon, um, Abercrombie & Fitch, Macy's, a ton of different ones are all associated with these companies. And if I link something in the description of my videos, it's usually an affiliate link and if people purchase from those links, I get a small commission of their entire purchase and that is the main way that I make all of the money I make from doing YouTube is through affiliate marketing right now. That is my biggest source of income. So if I'm like, hey, this notebook is pretty cool. I like it. You guys should check it out. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the bottom bar and you guys click that and buy it. I might get, I don't know, a dollar or something from the purchase and that adds up and of course that is how I make money through affiliate marketing. Um, another way to make money from YouTube is of course through brand deals. I don't do many brand deals right now because I'm still a smaller YouTuber, but a lot of YouTubers, as I'm sure you guys know, have sponsorships all the time and make the majority of their money through brand deals. And that is how this little hobby can turn into a full-time job is when you have opportunities like that coming your way quite often. But yeah, so I think those are like the main ways that you can make money through YouTube and as far as how to reach out for sponsorships or collaborations, just find an email, construct a good email template saying, hey, here's what I'm doing. I think that it would really be beneficial for both of us to work together. Like, sell yourself. I mean, just say why you think you are worth it and um, hopefully anything that is meant to be will fall into your lap. I can get into more of that in another video if you guys are interested. I could make this kind of like a little series. Let me know what else you guys are interested in specifically because I know it is a lot of information to cover and I feel like a lot of the things I didn't really know about like how to reach out to brands for sponsorships. Like, how do you do that? And I've recently kind of learned and developed a media kit for myself and everything like that. So I kind of learned on my own and I would love to talk more about that and hopefully help you guys. I know it can be overwhelming and seem really scary at first, but it is so worth it. I love it. I have so much fun sitting down to film and just putting up my videos and interacting with the people that watch me. I think it's so cool and it's such a unique thing that we have available to us at this um, point in society. So why not utilize it? It's really fun, really cool, and a great way to connect with people a thousand miles away, which is awesome. Anyways, that is going to be it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you don't want to miss any other content like this. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you all really soon in my next video. Bye guys.